So mushrooms really are magical, not just in how they grow, which is what this channel has been focused about, but also in what they can do for our overall health and well-being. For a species to actually be considered a medicinal mushroom or a functional mushroom, however, is a really high bar to pass. Out of the tens of thousands of species of mushrooms, only a select few are actually considered medicinal mushrooms, and even a smaller subset of that are mushrooms that are actually used on a regular basis. Some of these mushrooms have actually been used for hundreds if not thousands of years, really standing the test of time for their viability as a medicine. These medicinal mushrooms contain all sorts of different compounds and are responsible for all sorts of different functional benefits. But in this video, I wanted to talk about the one thing that unifies all medicinal mushrooms, and that's their ability to support and modulate our immune systems. Now, before understanding how mushrooms affect our immune systems, we first need to understand what mushrooms actually are. You see, believe it or not, metabolically speaking, mushrooms are actually more similar to humans than they are to plants. Unlike plants, which take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen, mushrooms breathe kind of like humans in that they take in oxygen and give off CO2. Structurally, however, mushrooms are actually more similar to plants than they are to humans in that their cell walls are made of rigid long chain polysaccharides which is another way of saying long chains of carbohydrates that are connected together in all sorts of different ways. These polysaccharides are super complex and super diverse, and they can vary widely depending on how all the individual units of the polysaccharide are connected together. One way that these polysaccharides can be classified is by having either alpha linkages or beta linkages. And these linkages are just describing the different ways that the individual units of the polysaccharide are connected together. Our bodies were designed to break down and digest alpha-linked polysaccharides. These are polysaccharides found in simple starches like potatoes, rice, or wheat. The cell walls of mushrooms, however, are made up of beta-linked polysaccharides, otherwise known as beta-glucans. These beta-glucans are a special type of polysaccharide that has a significant effect on our immune system. And the fact that these beta-glucans form an integral part of the mushroom cell walls goes to explain why mushrooms, or medicinal mushrooms in general, have such broad immunomodulatory properties. Of course, mushrooms contain more than just polysaccharides. Medicinal mushrooms contain compounds like sterols, statins, proteins, triterpenes, and more. But the one factor that unites them all are these special polysaccharides, the beta-glucans, these compounds that are able to interact with and support our immune systems. Of course, not all of these fungal polysaccharides or fungal beta-glucans are the same. They can vary widely in shape and size and configuration depending on the species of mushroom they come from and depending on what part of the mushroom they come from. So you might be wondering, how does this actually affect our immune systems? In short, the cells of the human immune system are hardwired to interact with these fungal beta-glucans. And this is no doubt because our immune system has evolved over time to be able to protect itself from fungal pathogens. The binding of these polysaccharides to key immune cells in our system allows for an increase in cytotoxic activity. Basically, it increases the ability of our immune cells to target and destroy other pathogens. These fungal polysaccharides in general initiate a widespread activation of our immune system. They're able to modulate our immune system, which is why they're known as biological response modifiers. In other words, mushrooms have shown the ability to both calm down an overactive immune system while at the same time kicking an underactive immune system into gear. Now, keep in mind that not all mushroom products are created equal. There's lots of different ways that mushrooms can be grown and how they can be processed that will have a huge result on what compounds are actually in the final product and what effects these will have on our immune systems. Now, most medicinal mushroom products will either be made from mycelium on grain, from whole fruiting body, or from a combination of both. Mycelium on grain is exactly what it sounds like. It uses the mycelium, which is kind of like the roots of the mushroom, which has been grown out on a sterile grain, like brown rice, like oats, and sometimes rye. Supplement Supplements made from mycelium on grain contain a high level of starch and a low level of fungal polysaccharides. Now this is just a result of a high amount of cereal grain being left in the final product. Supplements can also be made from whole fruiting body, which is the part of the mushroom that grows out of the ground. It's the part of the mushroom that you would think of when you actually think about a mushroom, and it's also what's been traditionally used for medicinal purposes. Mushrooms made from whole fruiting body contain high levels of immune-supporting fungal polysaccharides and low levels of starch. There are also some supplements that are made from a combination of both, which is often referred to as full spectrum. Usually what this is, is myceliated grain that's been allowed to grow long enough that little fruiting bodies will start to form inside the bag. 
The result of these supplements is still something that's really high in starch and low in levels of fungal polysaccharides. Of course, the starting material is important, but how these mushrooms are actually processed matters a lot as well. Mushroom products can be made from hot water extraction, from alcohol extraction, they can also be made from dual extraction, which is just a combination of hot water extraction and alcohol extraction, or they can be made by simply grinding up the myceliated grain or the fruiting body into a dry powder. But since the beneficial compounds of mushrooms are locked up inside these tough chitinous cell walls of the mushroom, some sort of extraction is necessary in order to pull those compounds out and make them bioavailable so you can actually get the full benefit. Now, it's important to remember that these fungal polysaccharides are the compounds that are most responsible for supporting our immune system are water soluble, meaning that they're pulled out of the mushroom and made bioavailable using hot water extraction techniques. Also, of the fungal polysaccharides that are found to have immunomodulating activity, the vast majority of these polysaccharides are found in the fruiting body, not in the mycelium. That's why the likely best option for those looking to support their immune systems with mushrooms is something that is made from whole fruiting body and that's been thoroughly hot water extracted. These types of supplements can easily be found in powder form in capsule form or sometimes in tincture form. Now intuitively this actually makes a lot of sense because traditionally how mushrooms would be used would you know you'd find the whole fruiting body in the wild and then you would prepare it making a decoction or a hot water extraction in the form of a tea which is basically the same process as using the whole fruiting body and going through a hot water extraction and then turning it into a powder. So you might be wondering what mushrooms do people actually use for immune support and as you can see there's a giant one behind me this is a giant fruiting body of a reishi mushroom or Ganoderma lucid. Um, but there's lots of different mushrooms like turkey tail, like chaga, like um, uh, maitake and cordyceps and lion's mane. All of these have different compounds and different fungal polysaccharides and all of these really deserve their own video. So I'm going to be doing some more videos to kind of go more in depth on each one of these medicinal mushrooms, talk about the compounds that are in them and talk about what people actually use them for. By far the most popular mushroom for immune support right now is turkey tail. Now turkey tail is a mushroom that grows on trees, it grows on dead or dying logs and if you've ever gone walking in the forest there's a really good chance that you've actually seen turkey tail. It's also typically cultivated because it's really easy to grow. Now the way turkey tail is typically used is the same as a lot of other medicinal mushrooms. The fruiting body is harvested, it'll be kind of broken up and put into a hot water to make a tea. So you'll steep it for an hour or two to actually pull out some of those beneficial compounds and make a hot water extraction or a tea. Of course, this can also be done on a commercial scale where this hot water extraction is done and then spray dried into a powder, which is why you can also find turkey tail in powder form in capsules or in a pouch or sometimes in tincture form. Uh, if a dual extraction was done. But yeah, turkey tail is by far one of the most popular medicinal mushrooms and most well-known and mo most well-studied medicinal mushrooms for immune support. But there's lots of other ones, like I said, and we're gonna be doing individual videos on each one of those. So yeah, until that time, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video and you wanna learn more about mushrooms, feel free to subscribe. We do weekly videos on the magic of mushrooms. And also, if you don't mind, go ahead and hit that like button. That really helps the video. So thanks so much for watching. I'm Tony from Fresh Cat Mushrooms and we'll see you in the next one.